Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Waban, the movie and TV show podcast where an expert on the subject discusses things with the average viewer. The, 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 the I don't messed up what I was trying to say. Uh, here we go. I am your host, Nim, and today I am joined by Indigo Montoya. <laughs> my name is Indigo Montoya. I've killed the man who killed my father. You will not die this day. Oh, okay. So I thought you were going to go with the like the actual quote, but you went with no, like it's a already done. after he killed him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, now he's going to uh, become oh, yeah, the he's... Dread Pirate Roberts. Yeah, yeah. That's, so. that's a detail that I forgot. Yeah, because he's like, I've been in the revenge game for so long that now I don't know what to do with my life. <laughs> Have you ever thought of piracy? <laughs> <laughs> I love how they just like play piracy as like, it's just this fun thing that he does. Like, even though piracy oh, yeah. is like horrible, he's like, yeah, I'm a pirate. Yeah, I kill people. You know, yeah, I raid <laughs> ships. Like, okay. <laughs> um, I think that's the general vibe of this movie is like everything is just played up to be more like not as serious as it would be in real life oh yeah yeah which is i mean obviously this movie is more comedic than anything like like if you really think about like the general like you don't really feel that much tension or stakes in this movie i think for the most part yeah not really no but that's i think on purpose like it's it's supposed to be just a lot of fun um and it is so yeah i don't know what it sees in that so 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 I've seen the Princess Bride like a million times ever since I was a young child. So I'm I'm a, maybe a little bit blinded by nostalgia, you know, a little bit, uh-huh. right? So since it's your first time you've ever seen this, I just want to hear your initial thoughts on it. I understand the hype. Like it's definitely good and it's funny. And yeah. I definitely wasn't bored at any point in time. Yeah. But it is a kind of thing of like, I've heard it so many times how good this movie is. And it's just like, like, yeah, it is. I don't get why I heard it 3,000 however many times. So, Well, it does definitely. I think that's one thing I, I always, when somebody I know like sees it for the first time, it's like they always kind of feel like it was overhyped, you know, in a way where it's they're like, I mean, it was a fun movie. Right. But it's, <laughs> but it wasn't like something. It wasn't like groundbreaking. Like, yeah. Why did this crowd of people scream this at me? I know it's a good movie, but like, why the crowd? Right. Yeah, I think I don't know. There's just some. I think a large part of it is probably nostalgia. A lot of people grew up with it. Um, but also just, I think a large part of it is how memorable it is. I think. Oh yeah. Because there's so, so many of the just moments and lines of dialogue and just the way the actors present it is so just sticks with you, I think. It's very memorable. It's all just so unique and weird. And like a lot of the lines of dialogue are so memorable because mm-hmm. they're just so unique and just very specific to this movie. Like, I. <laughs> okay, so obviously I I basically knew Indigo Montoya. I knew uh, uh you fallen for one of the classic blunders. But there were still a few that I did not know were from this movie. Like there will be no survivors. And like <laughs> that just popped out of nowhere and I just started laughing because like, oh crap, that's from this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean there like it, it has been said by many people that this is like one of the most quotable movies of all time, and I think a lot of it just comes down to there's just something very weird and unique about the way the dialogue is written and how the mm-hmm. dialogue is delivered by the actors. It's just so oh yeah, it's difficult to describe, but it's just like very unique and crazy, like you know like we just weird quirks that each character has and stuff that really stick with you you know like yeah co- like like some Vicini constantly saying inconceivable like that's just the word he loves to use oh, yeah yeah uh, <laughs> you keep saying that word i do not think it means what you think it means right right exactly like there's just so many like <sighs> i don't know it's, it's it's difficult to describe why the dialogue is so memorable 
And I mean, it's, I don't think it's just the dialogue. I mean, I think the dialogue is well written in that way, mm-hmm. but I think it's, it's also the actors, um, you know, their delivery of the dialogue, which is just great. Yeah. All the actors do great in this. You know, um, it might be that like the story itself and like the setup of everything is so simple that mm-hmm. like it makes the dialogue and its delivery shine more. Yeah. It's just all about the moments instead of the big story. Yeah, I think that's the thing with this movie is it's the thing that makes it great isn't anything to do with the the interesting plots or the amazing cinematography and set design and all this like filmmaking things that you would typically think of when you think of like uh, a fantasy story. Right. It's more specific to the just the the very uniqueness of the characters more so than anything um and the actors who portray them and how well they portray them and how like like each actor does a great job of just becoming these weird quirky characters oh, yeah. and the way they work off of each other is such a great just fun it's just fun you know mm-hmm. the way um and it, it's, it's the dialogue is written in a way that really makes their the actors interactions with each other really shine i think that's 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 the strength of this movie you know because i mean if you look at things like typical filmmaking things like you know the actual filmmaking as far as cinematography and stuff is not bad but it's not great it's like at pretty decent you know it's average mm-hmm. um i mean you could tell this movie is low budget i think um yeah yeah i think but, so and if you look at like like set design, costume design, it none of it's spectacular, right? None of it's like like you think about like other fantasy stories. Like you think about like Lord of the Rings, for instance. That's like a huge uh, yeah. thing about those movies is it's great costume design, amazing um, set design. Everything just like really brings you into that world so mm-hmm. well all the, the castles the yeah Sauron's tower it's all yeah like this movie and the, the costumes seem kind of cheap for the most part like they seem just kind of like it but it almost works in the movie's benefit i think because it kind of fits the tone really well where it's it's the the movie almost has this like satirical tone in some ways but also not yeah. It's like I mean, interesting. On one hand, it uh, it doesn't distract from the characters themselves, which mm-hmm. are pretty the main focus of the movie, right? It's the best part. Yes. And then just the way all the lines are said and delivered, you can't quite take it seriously. Like, oh, he gets fifty years of his life taken away. Like, no, he doesn't. <laughs> You're joking. <laughs> With oh, this he's... little water wheel suction cup thing, nah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like it's just so bizarre, and I don't know. I think that it's some somewhat of what makes this movie so great is just the uniqueness of it. Like I can't, like a lot of the lines of dialogue you can't imagine being in another movie. Like they they fit so well with the how this world is created that and how these oh, yeah. characters interact. That's just. Oh. Even like the Indigo Montoya scene, where it just keeps repeating it and getting louder and louder, it's just like any other movie that just be weird. Like, why do you keep saying it? He heard you the first time. There's no point in this. But in this one, it's just like, yeah, you're Indigo Montoya. Get him. Yeah, and then he's like, I want my father back, you son of a bitch, as he stabs him. It's just a great moment, you know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's yeah, and, and I think. It's, it was honestly a great idea that they, the, they chose to frame this movie through a book being read from a, you know, a modern day. Well, modern day at the time. Obviously, now it's not modern day because it's in the 80s. But, yeah. you know, look at that old video game he's playing at the beginning. Um, uh-huh. Which, I, it, like, I, I love that the movie is framed in that way because that kind of adds to the satirical tone of it. Where it's like mm-hmm. the the these modern day characters can comment on the story right like he's like ah like the 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 beginning it starts to get too like overly cheesy and romantic and he's able to be like 
oh, come on. Is this a kissing book? Like, like the audience might be thinking like, I don't know, this seems a little like a, like a real cheesy romance. Cause like at that point in the movie, there isn't a lot of comedy yet. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't quite, it doesn't quite get into its normal tone yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and then suddenly you're taken out of that like cheesy romantic moment with, Oh, are you kidding me? Is this a kissing book? And then like it, it's something that there, there's there's so many moments where it's like, and then like there's a moment that could be considered a tension filled moment, a tense moment. You know, the the shrieking eels attacking him, and then all of a sudden yeah. it cuts away to them being like, "Oh, you look concerned." Just so you know, you just, she doesn't get eaten by the eel. And, yeah, like mm-hmm. that's so directed at the audience. Like, right? It's that it's that kind of satire, like mm-hmm. just making fun of you for watching it and being invested. Yeah. Right, and it's one of those things where it's like in any other movie that would be such a dumb decision. Like, oh, you just killed the tension that was being built up. Like, come on! But it—that's not the point of this movie. This movie isn't supposed to be building real tension. It's just supposed to—you're just supposed to have fun with the characters and the situations and the right, right. Just so it kind of just builds up that fun interactions, just to take it away from you as a joke. And you think about even things like like the sword fight for instance between indigo Mm -hmm. and wesley you know it's a great sword fight really well choreographed but like there's no tension because they have this like gentleman like banter back and forth with they don't they don't hate each other you know he's just trying to kill him because that's it's his job you know like they're just they're just kind of having fun they're admiring each other's skills they're like Mm -hmm. it's just like so there's no tension there but again that's not the point so it's it's fine like again in any other movie that would might be not be a good thing but i think it works well in this movie because that's just that's the point (laughs) yeah like they're even smiling throughout that entire thing and then there's the whole i'm not left-handed exchange for both of them and that however many times they both drop their swords or throw it up into the air for a cool moment and the other one just lets them retrieve it (laughs) yeah yeah they have this like mutual respect for each other because they're Mm -hmm. both great swordsmen and it's like yeah just like a really cool like at the end between them where he's like oh kill me quickly he's like oh i'm not gonna kill you like he's like what is like the line where he's like you know, I'd, I'd as soon, you know, Something break a stained glass, stained glass window, window than yeah. kill an artist like yourself. But since I can't have you following me, either, just knocks him out instead. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, and then and then like even his fight with like Fezzik, where he's like, you know, fighting a giant, which mm-hmm. could easily be like a very tense filled thing. You know, you're fighting this giant guy who's clearly way stronger than you. Oh, but they're yeah. just kind of having a fun little conversation about like what it's like. <laughs> yeah, up to the moment that he passes out. Yeah. <laughs> or oh, I, I love the line afterwards. So it's like, I do not envy the headache you'll have when you wake up, but dream of meantime, giant women or whatever. In the meantime, like, sleep well and dream of large women. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, that gets me. That gets me every time. Yeah, I, th- I think one of the funniest things too. Like, did you know that this movie was framed through like the grandfather reading the book to his son, to his grandson? I, I don't think I did. I do believe I remembered hearing it like months ago or years ago, whatever it was. But I think I had forgotten about it. Yeah. So I think that's an interesting thing too, because it's like if you don't know that going in, because you obviously know like it's supposed to be this classic fantasy like you know obviously like it takes place years and years ago and Mm -hmm. blah 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 whatever and then you just open the movie with this like 80s video game and you're like wait what (laughs) wait what is this i I checked multiple times to make sure i was watching the right movie (laughs) (laughs) yeah it confuses you for Mm -hmm. if you don't know that i think yeah it's just such a weird thing and then you're like uh and then he comes in and he's like, I'm going to read you a book. It's the Princess Bride. And you're like, oh, I got it. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, no, I, I think I don't know. And like, honestly, like 
it's weird because like I, I I label this as one of my favorite movies of all time, right? Probably mm-hmm. possibly top five. Um, which it like seems weird from like somebody who's such so critical with like movies and stuff and because it doesn't seem like the type of movie that I would typically put on like a top right. It's list. not really like technically advanced or has a lot of skill in its making it's just yeah i mean it does have a lot of skill in some of its making but it's it's more in the in different areas that and and i think now a large part of that is probably because of nostalgia like if i didn't grow up with this seeing it so many times i probably i might not put it as high i would probably still like Mm -hmm. it but not maybe not quite as much um yeah it is interesting just you know i don't know i just I always enjoy it. And then, you know, every time I watch it, I just kind of quote it along the way as I'm watching. Um, just recite the movie as it comes. Yeah, as I was doing like, that with my girlfriend, and she's just like, are you going to keep doing this the whole movie? And I'm like, well. <laughs> yeah, um, no, it's kind of a dick move. <laughs> I mean, she's seen it before, too, so it's not like it was her first time. Um, right, right. But I, there's <laughs> no way that that doesn't get annoying. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny because it's like it's like the thing that I think I, my all my siblings do too. Like everybody in my family, my dad and this stuff. Like, like we all just because it's like it's it, this is like my family's favorite movie. Like our, it's probably not everybody in my family's individual favorite movie, but like collectively, this is like oh, our yeah, family's like favorite the average movie. Average of your family's favorite movie is the right, Princess Bride. Exactly. Um, yeah, it's just. You know, and, and I, I've, I've mentioned this before. It's the one movie I can think of that I may have seen more times than the original Star Wars trilogy. So, you know. Yeah, yeah there's there's no arguing with that one. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, But yeah, there's just so many like little moments in the movie where my brain, every time I watch it, my brain just like, yep, I know the sound cue that's coming. I know this little thing, this, all these little details. I'm like, yep, there's that. There's that. You're, you're like, uh, Groundhog Day, except specifically with Princess Bride. Yeah. I've seen it so many times. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I think another nice thing about this movie too, is like, it doesn't, overstay its welcome either like it's a nice quickly paced like it's not very s- slow paced in any scenes like it doesn't you know it just kind of it's 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 a nice easy easy movie to sit through it's not mm-hmm. very long it's just a nice fun little time you know you enjoy it you get to the end you're like that was fun and it's you know it's nice you move on you know yeah. it's not and like yeah technically from a storytelling standpoint there's not a lot of interesting character arcs or anything like that i mean there's a girl montoya who kills right. the guy right there's there's obviously it. there's plot progression and there's there's sort of things like that but there's not like you know internal character arcs of like somebody changing a lot you know over the course of the film i guess i mean you could say wesley started out as like just a farm boy and then he'd be you know uh, but that i mean that's kind of like off screen yeah that's like off screen character development of like it skips ahead five years and he's gone through all this right and Mm -hmm. he explains what he went through but like you know it in the plot again is very simple but that's fine um i'm actually curious how long the movie actually is because it, it's definitely it's less 30. than two hours yeah let me look this up how long is the princess bride but no nope, that's not what i was looking up yeah an hour and 38 minutes yeah so it's like not long not know, really not super long. short either you know, it's a pretty average kind of movie. Um, so, yeah. It's just it's just a fun time. I, I don't really know what more to say about this, you know? It's yeah, like, we picked this movie, and then you mentioned before we even started, like, wow, what am I supposed to say about this? Like, it's a great movie. I love it, but how do we talk about it? <laughs> yeah. Well, right. Plot-wise, there's not a lot of interesting things going on. It's just kind of, again, it's all about just the fun character interactions and Mm -hmm. stuff and dialogue and whatever. Um, And then, like, yeah. 
Uh, one thing I, I will point out too that I think is really cool is like it does a great job at making every character memorable. Oh yeah. Like even the minor characters that aren't that important, like just something simple, like, like miracle max, who's literally in one scene, but like, he's great. He's like, you know, um, I cannot think of the actor's name at the moment. I know it. Um, but he I does such I recognize a, his voice. Honestly, yeah, he's uh, uh, Mike Wazowski. That's it. Yes. Yep, that, it's Mike that Wazowski. It. Yep. Um, I cannot, I, I know his name. I just can't think of it at the moment. Um, but like that, he just does such a good job at just making him such a weird, quirky, unique character that mm-hmm. you're going to easily remember. And just like him and, and, and his wife's back and forth. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're a witch. Him. I'm not a witch. I'm your wife. And then Indigo just like realizing what's going on and just being like, just, you know, popping in that, oh, if he does this, then it ruins the <laughs> prince's life. Well, then he tries to like come up with a lie. He's just like, his wife is crippled family on the brink of starvation <laughs> you're a rotten liar <laughs> and then he tells uh, the truth and just like your other story was better <laughs> like you just true love the is the greatest thing in the world except a nice MLT mutton lettuce and tomato <laughs> when the mutton is nice and lean uh, he's just such a yeah. God, like that he gives them no mercy in that scene. He just like, nah, I'm not helping you, no matter what. <laughs> Until finally, like, oh, I get to <laughs> screw over this guy. Hey, hell yes. But he's dead. What do we do? <laughs> beep, beep, beep. Look who knows so much. Turns out your friend is just mostly dead. Big difference. <laughs> <laughs> if you're all dead. There's only one thing you can do. Search his pockets and look for loose change. God. <laughs> uh, you know, when when they said miracle worker, my brain was just like, oh, you know, they're going to go to a church or like a magician or something, whatever. No, it's just this dude in the backwoods that's just like full on steal from you, take your stuff and just, yeah, I ain't helping you. It doesn't help me at all. <laughs> I ain't looking for that kind of jump change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like... I, I always wonder, like, why did why did the prince fire him, you know? Because he's, he's clearly good at what he does. I mean, he... I mean, he is an asshole. Well, right, but, like, is he partially an asshole because he's so bitter that he was fired? Because, I mean, that seems to be the thing, right? He's just kind of like, ah... He's all old and bitter because he was fired by the prince. Uh, right. The wife did say that he lost confidence because of it, so maybe. Yeah, exactly. Um, bye-bye, boys. Have fun storming the castle. Oh, yeah. I think it'll work? <laughs> it would take a miracle. Um, that, that, that line so much reminded me of, uh, uh, was it Elf? Bye, buddy. Hope you find your dad. <laughs> oh my gosh, I I love the scene too, where they're like on the top of the wall, like looking down, to like mm-hmm. planning for their attack later. And the entire time, he's just limp and yeah, like he I just think has to hold him up. Those three actors work so well together. It's just oh, yeah. they they're a great trio. Um. I mean, they, it, it worked really well together, like, earlier in the movie when it was the two of them with, um, working on, working as a trio with, um, the other guy, the short guy, Vicini. Yeah. Yeah, Vicini. But, like, it, that was a little bit of a different dynamic, because Vicini was very, like, controlling over them, and he's very much a dick to them. Yeah, and it was just um, them annoying him and him controlling them. <laughs> Am I going mad, or did the word "think" escape your lips? Mm-hmm. God, it's such. Uh, it's such just a rude shit, and the whole <laughs> exchange of him like lodging out the cups completely, and it's just like you're getting nowhere. Just pick a cup. I don't care anymore. <laughs> like, so I can't like pick my own cup because you. Them. 
Although you probably guessed that I would wouldn't pick this cup, so I, I'm gonna pick this cup. <laughs> mm-hmm. And then he even goes out of his way to do the whole, oh, what's that? Oh, I switched glasses when your back was turned. Like, what was the point of that? Just pick the one that's... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you're so <laughs> confident that your choice is right, just pick the one. And then the reveal that <laughs> both were poisoned and that he's built yeah, an immunity. And say, so, oh yeah, he was right. Both were poisoned, just like he said. He could de- definitely not pick either cup. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's great. You just fell for one of the classic blunders. <laughs> First of which is the... Um, never enter a land war in Asia. Never enter a land war in Asia. Yeah. But only slightly less well known is never going against a Sicilian when death is on the line. Um, I actually have a t-shirt somewhere that has that where it's like the classic blunders. Then it says number one never enter a land war with Asia, then number two, never go in against the Sicilian when death is on the line. <laughs> I have that t-shirt somewhere. I don't know. That's great. Um, <laughs> I, I do yeah. also love the moment immediately after when he's just laughing and he suddenly just stops and, and like, then collapses. <laughs> yeah. And it's not even like smooth at all. It's clearly just him like rolling over onto his side. <laughs> <laughs> just looks so goofy. Oh, <laughs> uh, jeez. Yeah. So at what point in the movie did you realize that the guy following them, the guy man in black, was Wesley? Oh, as soon as I realized it wasn't like the prince or his entourage, my parents were like, oh yeah, definitely. Okay. Okay. I wasn't sure. Like there I know- is no mystery. <laughs> I-, I know like when I was a little kid watching it for the first time. I, I'm pretty sure it was like a surprise to me, but that's because I was a young child. Right, right. Right. So it was harder to, you know, it's easier to uh, to have like a surprising reveal in a movie if for a young child. But um, yeah, if I watched it now and like, I mean, you can, I mean, if you pay attention, like it's the same voice and like, mm-hmm. you know, he has the same mustache. Did he have this, that mustache in the beginning? Of I don't it? actually he, think so. Cause my, no, he didn't. He like, didn't. That yeah. mustache wasn't there. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but Buttercup obviously doesn't realize it until he says, as you wish. Yeah, as he's rolling down a hill after she pushed him. He just as And you then she just wish. throws herself down. Instead of running down the hill, she oh, just goes, yeah. I'm going to throw myself down. It's like you can just walk carefully walk down. You don't have to leap. Like, that's a steep hill. You can just kind of slowly make your way yeah, down you know you don't have to down. like potentially injure yourself <laughs> but um oh and the fire swamp that's a great sequence oh, yeah. too <laughs> what what's the uh acronym that gave it r-o-u-s the yeah. rodents of unusual what, size yeah what about the i don't R-U-S? think they exist oh, man. I, don't know. I, have, I have about he he literally saw them and he knows they're there and mm-hmm. he's just like I don't think they exist. And then it's just... <laughs> so, like, yeah, of course that's going to happen. You can't just ignore it. But yeah, he's just kind of like, you know, he. I think it's like he doesn't want to scare her, freak her out too much. Right, you know, he wants right. to keep her calm. Because, like, he's, he's calm and collected because, you know, obviously he's gone through, you know, five years of yeah, training. He's, he's become Dread the Pirate Dread Pirate Rogers. Roberts. Like, so... There will be no survivors. <laughs> But yeah, no, like, again, I, I want to point out just how, like, memorable a lot of the minor, like, side characters are even. Like, so, for instance, yeah. a good example is um, the albino, for instance. Oh, yeah. He's just so weird and quirky, and he has that moment of, like, eh, the pit of despair. <coughs> Don't even think about trying to escape. <laughs> Which is just such a... <laughs> Again, that goes along with the whole satirical aspect of the film of like mm-hmm. taking like a common trope and flipping it on its head, you know. Right. Like he walked in as like I can't even tell what gender this person is. It's so like weird and like, you know, powered face and all that. And it starts talking to that but it's like, okay, it's like the gnarled hag kind of thing that's in the torture chamber and then he starts coughing just Oh. Oh, it's just, okay, all that's out the window. Cool. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. 
and that's just kind of generally how this movie goes you know yeah um that's the vibe that's going for it and it works really well but yeah or like the guy um even just a minor character like the guy the the guy who has the key to the gate like <laughs> yeah. he has that moment with the he he has this like weird like awkwardness around the prince that like defines his character in a way this weird like like he comes in and he's the prince is just like points like to sit over here he's like oh he sits has his arm on the on the his arm rests and he's like he like look gives him a look and he pulls it off and like like he doesn't yeah, he just he so has this good. yeah like you didn't have to give that character any personality whatsoever because he's mm-hmm. just not an important character he's just the guy who's in charge of like you know protecting the gate and has the key and stuff yeah and then it was just you know give us the key i don't have a key and then they <laughs> threw his arms out oh you mean this gate key? <laughs> yeah um so good <laughs> yes um i i always found it weird like the climax a little bit so like the whole like they literally just like tie the prince up and then just leave like they could have oh, done yeah, something um yeah they like at this point but nobody i guess knows it, what he tried to do and so it's like yeah he failed but there wasn't really any consequence to it well, right he's just gonna go and try to marry some other chick who doesn't want to and murder mm-hmm. her you know <laughs> I love I love the casualty of his line of just being like, oh, I've got this. He's like, oh, he's like, would you like to come and see? It's like, oh, I love watching work, but you know, I'm so busy. I got this and this and this and a wedding to plan, a wife oh, to murder, right, and Gilda to flame for and Gilda to frame for it. I'm swamped. Like he just casually a wife oh, to yeah. murder. He's just listing off his to do list. You know. <laughs> A wedding to plan, a wife to murder, and Gilder to frame for it. For it. Just... Oh my. And the way he's just like... Because you find out that he hired Vassini to kill the princess to like frame, kill, frame uh, yeah, it on, yeah. uh, Gil, on Gilder or whatever. Who's Gilder? <laughs> the f- sworn enemy of Florent. Um, but yeah, and he's like... <laughs> and, and he's just like... Oh, it'll be so much more moving when I strangle her on my on our wedding night. Like he's just so like, like what is, <laughs> what kind yeah. of sociopath is this man? <laughs> like the way the movie just casually like talks about death in general is just kind of funny. Like, oh yes, I'm mm-hmm. a pirate. I kill people. I've killed a lot of people. Whatever. Like I've taken no survivors. <laughs> and I'm fighting for true love. What? It's just such a huh? like. Yeah, you think about it like. Wesley has been a pirate for the past like five years, killing people, taking no survivors, you know, being mm-hmm. a ruthless pirate. Be- being and told. he's the and he's our hero of the movie. Yes, he's yeah. coming to have find true love. And, and every then, night being told, Yeah, I'll probably kill you in the morning. <laughs> like like death is just such a casual thing, which like maybe that's playing on the fact that like back in the day, like death was just a thing that happened all the time. Um, you know, it's just a, like, like back in the day, people would just like die all the time. And it was like, whatever, um, right, maybe that, right. maybe that's like a, more it's, common, it's similar to, to similar to like the scene. It reminds me sort of the scene in, um, <laughs> in Monty Python, the Holy Grail, when they're just like, oh, walk yeah. by, bring out your dead. <laughs> bring oh, out- yeah. <laughs> reminds me of that. They're just like, yep, everybody has your <laughs> I just like bring out your dead and throw them on this pile. Every time I think of that scene, my brain goes, "How often does that wagon go through?" Right? Yeah. Is it, if it's like once a day, how many people die a day? Well, yeah. It's again, it's just playing on the whole fact of like back in the day, people just died. It's like, oh yeah, like they, you know, it was normal to live till you're like thirty or forty, you know, and just die of some disease or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yep, yeah, family member's dead. Whatever. <laughs> Bring, but like that, their whole casualty of just bringing up, yeah, just, you know, people die, people get killed, whatever. It's just such a, it reminded me of that, like, that whole kind of, bring out your dead. Um, 
Yeah. But it's just it's just great. Um, oh, there's, there's also uh, when he turns the machine up to 50 and he starts screaming and, and he goes just like, that's that's him. <laughs> like, what? What are you talking about? How do you know? How do you know it's him? <laughs> it's like, that's that's a sound of pure anguish. That's what that's the sound that my heart made when my father was killed. And it's just like, it's like his true love is marrying another. So, of course, he makes that sound. And I'm like, what? <laughs> What you, like that's again, not even why he's making that sound that's such a line that like that's a moment where like in any other movie would just be so ridiculous mm-hmm. but it fits in this movie it's just you you like the, the tone that this world is created is to the point where you get to that point and you're just like you just kind of accept it you're like yep that's just how things are in this world that's how things yeah, work exactly. in this movie and the fact that he's yelling so loud that everyone is in the town can hear it in mm-hmm. buttercup in the castle can hear it like not realistic but okay or like soon after when he's just like guide my sword father to find the entrance just like what are you doing like i know this is gonna work it's this kind of movie it's going to work but what are you doing <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> hits the tree and he like slumps over on as if he's giving just up before happens to hit them. Opens it. Yeah. Mm, gosh. Well, yeah, because it's like the whole thing is that there's only three people who know about the pit of despair, right. and it's like it's um, the prince, the prince, the Count Rogan, and the, the albino. albino. Yeah. <laughs> uh and then there's there's just so many like conveniencies too, like where they're like planning, and he's like, it's like yeah, he's like, he's like, oh, if only I had a wheelbarrow. Hey, what happened to that wheelbarrow that the albino had? Well, why didn't? What I wouldn't give that? for a Holocaust cloak. Ah, uh, I can't help you there. Oh, would this do? <laughs> Miracle Max gave it to me. It fits so well, and he said I could keep it, which. Also, ex- one makes you wonder why did Miracle Max have such a large cloak oh, yeah. that wouldn't yeah. fit him at all um and the fact also it's it's called a holocaust cloak i i would assume that that's like a specific thing but well, what might... does that what does that does that word what does that word actually mean because like obviously we associate the word with like the Holocaust, I mean, right? I always just assumed it was just the name given to it, like it was a specific name made for it. Right, that. but like obviously the Holocaust is called that for a reason. What does the word actually mean? Like I think it actually oh, has um, a me- a meaning, an actual. I don't know. I've always thought that was like interesting. Like it's just, like okay, just, yeah, they're just gonna go out and call it that. <laughs> oh no! It literally means. It basically means genocide. Destruction or slaughter on a mass scale. Okay, never mind. Especially yeah, would... like fire or nuclear war. Wow. So I mean, I guess related to fire, like it's something you can set on fire. It was the whole what a yeah. I just always thought that oh. was weird. Okay, so this actually answers one of my questions. A Holocaust cloak is another name for a cloak of flames. It is a heavy garment that is meant to ignite either due to the rage of the wearer as punishment. Uh, okay. Let me just slow this. Blah, blah, blah. So, Basically, it's non-flammable. Right. So the Holocaust cloak is like a thing that was. Ex- yeah. It can right. light on fire, but it won't actually burn. Fairly thick. Okay. 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 I wasn't sure. Like I got because I always I always thought that was weird. I was like a Holocaust cloak. Like why is it called that? Okay, that makes sense. Um, but I, I love that they try to like play into the legends of the the Great Pirate Roberts. Like he's literally just a guy. Who's mm-hmm. like really skilled or whatever, but like the it's just there's all these legends about him. So they're like, oh, this guy, this giant who's on fire, just kind of floating by. Oh yeah, there will be no survivors. <laughs> I am the great pirate Robert. Roberts. <laughs> so this is actually kind of interesting. So apparently, normally the cloak wouldn't catch on fire at all, but the dread pirate Roberts figured out that if you run a razor. Blah, 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 something specific. You can fray the fibers just enough that the cloak gets a little bit of a fuzzy aura. This fuzziness, fuzziness on the unlike the rest of the cloak, is highly flammable. Nice. 
Okay. So it can light on fire while actually being safe to wear. Right. Relatively. Which is why he wanted one, yeah, because he knew all about that. Huh. I also love the idea that, like, the Dread Pirate Roberts is just a different person every oh, five yeah. years or so. Because it's, like, it's the idea of, like, okay, why would somebody want to just be a pirate for 20 years straight? Like, a- after a while, you'd eventually get to the point where you're like, you know what? I have enough money from being a pirate. Like, I mm-hmm. want to go and live and enjoy my life, right? Yeah, so it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense that he'd be like, after five years or so, he'd be like, you know what? I'm going to pass it on to somebody. I don't want the Dread Pirate Roberts to not be a thing anymore, so I'm going to pass it on. To- and he's just like, yes, he... Uh, he went and got a new crew and uh, started calling me the, the Roberts until the crew believed it, and uh, I've been Roberts ever since. I'm like, oh. <laughs> then he left, and he's just hanging out, taking a vacation, retired. And then that's, yeah. Right, it's like he's living like a king in wherever, because, you know, it's like, yeah, like because if you think about it, it's like the whole idea of piracy is like, so you can get a bunch of money, but like, mm-hmm. what's the point of stealing a bunch of money if you don't enjoy being rich you know right 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 and it's like do a lot of things on the sea. right it's like so you do it for like five years or so gather a bunch of money and then go all right i'm retiring goodbye <laughs> <laughs> like makes sense i guess <laughs> um <laughs> and then but then pass it on to somebody else so people think you're still yeah, you know a pirate a going. pirate so that way people aren't going to be as suspicious being like, oh, what happened to him? Oh, is this this guy who's rich over here might be him. Hmm. And then he gets suspicious, you know, just kind of, you know, nobody will be suspicious because they're like, oh, the Dread Pirate Roberts is still out there. <laughs> yeah. It's the name that um, counts because nobody would surrender to the Dread Pirate Wesley. Oh, not only is that like really good for the person who gets the name, it's also really good for him because they like – Right. Nobody's out looking for him because they think he's still on the seas. Yeah, yeah. Well, I love how Buttercup is just kind of like, yeah, yeah, you're a pirate. Okay, I'm still in love with you, whatever. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's just not like, damn, you've killed a bunch of people. You've robbed a bunch of ships and killed people. And (laughs) she's just like, oh, you're a pirate. Okay. Yeah. Like, she doesn't think maybe he killed somebody else who was in love with somebody like he was like she thought he had been killed but you know no she's just kind of like oh okay just yeah accepted. no it's just like oh he's alive cool like there is that moment where she like gives him a look like oh that's weird like what like like after he tells the story she's just kind of like okay she has like a weird look on her face for a second where she's like that's odd <laughs> um yeah, it never actually establishes what like their personalities was were towards each other or anything like that so when they meet again it's like is this normal for them did they change at all what's happening right like clearly he changed a lot right because he's Mm -hmm. he's he became you know he learned a lot of things he's you know he studied sword fighting and all this stuff you know he built an (laughs) an immunity to iocane powder like he's just such so much more intelligent than probably you know he just knows a lot more than he used to but like her i mean you get the implication she hasn't done much in the those five years you know right right she sat in a room we know not eating or sleeping it's like okay that's sad yeah yeah and i've always wondered like what her like status social status is because I feel like it's higher than like the average peasant, right? Because she, I kind of doubt it. Well, okay, so like she's living on this, like I'm, I mean, obviously on this farm or whatever, and she seems like, like she has this like farm boy as like a farm hand or whatever, like I guess for their family or whatever. So, like, it's a hired farm hand or something. Like, I feel like you'd have to have a decent, and then she has horses and stuff. Like, I feel like, you know, you in order to own like a nice farm like that with horses and everything in a society right. like that you'd have like to be up higher landowners and he's yeah. just the hired help yeah exactly that's what i'm thinking because like so she's higher up status social status than like a common peasant mm-hmm. which is maybe considered a commoner right but like so but like to a level where the prince would choose somebody like as his bride like maybe the prince wouldn't choose somebody who's at the bottom of the social ladder 
but like somebody who's more in the middle you know what i mean like mention anything like that because he just always like there's the whole big reveal of her like she was a commoner but now you might not find her so common blah 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 mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah but she's not quite as she's not quite down to like the bottom of the social ladder i wouldn't think because again she is she has these horses and this farm and land and stuff which you know a common peasant wouldn't own (laughs) um yeah i I also find it so weird though that wesley just is like oh wesley had to travel to find fortune or whatever like i like again it never gives a good explanation as to why wesley leaves he's just like he had to leave to travel the world to find fortune or something i don't know what what it said something like that and i'm like Oh. Yeah, it's just kind of he left. Bye. He had to leave because that's just what he had to do. Because that's what needs to happen for our story to make sense. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, for a movie like this, it's kind of fine because again, this is going for just a more simple right. story, just to have the fun. This isn't the kind of story that you'd analyze to figure out all of its little right. Uh, yeah works i guess you would call it yeah 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 um but like yeah <laughs> but you know like that's that's what gets the plot going so it's fine murder by pirates yeah, actually, is good actually now that i think about it it'd be really funny to like do a deep dive into like, the political structure of this world <laughs> and just figure it out even oh though it's God. not gonna make any sense <laughs> yeah it's like who cares um i mean we know that there's two nations that are against each other there's mm-hmm. florin there's florin which is florence so florin florence which is the nation we're in that's like the kingdom we're in right and then there's gilder which is like their sworn enemies and there's florin and the prince is trying to start a war with gilder right we and know there's that spaniards in some capacity somewhere Right. So, well, they mention like, obviously, Spaniards like they're like Spain exists, and mm-hmm. like Australia is mentioned. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Because the powder, yeah. Right. So it, it clearly the ge- geography wise, it's like our world, but it also has like our giants. U.S.'s giants. Mm-hmm. Um miracles like miracle max and stuff uh it's it's essentially a magician but i guess i don't know it's like Uh, the very definition of like low magic in a medieval story just like nobody knows how it works and it's never explained but it's sprinkled here and there yeah well it's it's a world that feels very like real and grounded with sprinkles of like fantasy right where it's like, oh, there's Miracle Max. There's these cre- the ROUSs, which aren't real in, in the real world. And then, like, the you know, the Fire Swamp generally has, like, a kind of mystical feeling to it. Like, the Fire Spurts, which are kind of weird and unrealistic and stuff. Um, <laughs> and then, like, there's Giants, which, I mean, I guess Giants are real. Because, I mean, he, the the actor actually was really that large. Right, so right. I guess, the real dude. <laughs> yeah. So... Um, which actually the actor Andre the Giant so he was in like he, he I think he was in like WWE or something like that he was like a wrestler mm-hmm. and he actually had some sort of disease or something that made him that large um, I think that's usually the case right for what's stuff that? like that that's usually the case for stuff like that right yeah yeah and, and that's like actually what really tall or just for andre just large in general yeah and he actually died from that disease back i don't know so like he's all the other actors from this movie are still living today mm-hmm. well except for probably like the actors who played like the king maybe i don't know the key that actor seemed pretty old but um or like the king and queen but um he's he passed away back i want to say 80s or 90s like it wasn't like it was a while ago that he passed away and it was from that disease actually Mm -hmm. which is sad but um he was funny yeah he was there will be no survivors (laughs) 
See, I'm I'm carrying three people, and he's only got himself. He yeah, has a point. I'm just gonna have to find a new giant. That's all. <laughs> he didn't fall. Inconceivable. Oh my Wait. god! There's just so many great lines in here. What's well, the uh? When they're following him in the boat, and he's like, "I wonder if he's using the same wind we are using." <laughs> There's a, a when they meet the albino and they try to interrogate him. Jog his memory, bonk! You just pass. Sorry, out. I didn't mean to jog him so hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and it, it looks so gentle the way he does it, because it's just kind of like he just pops his fist on the top of his head, but it's not fast or anything. It's just boop. But it was enough to knock him unconscious. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh! Yeah, good times, good times. Yeah, um, yeah, but yeah. So, is this a movie you could see yourself like rewatching? Uh, maybe with friends. Yeah, just as a yeah. I think it's definitely a fun movie to watch with people. Like, it's definitely like this isn't something that you you like. There are definitely movies that I think are better to watch. Not necessarily, not, not, I mean, not better alone, but like they're better to watch without, you know, just focusing on the movie 100%. Yeah. Like you're just getting in really, you know, just into the world that you're watching. You're just really invested in what you're watching and, and, and getting sucked in and stuff. This isn't one of those movies. Um, this yeah. is definitely a movie that's. Like I said, probably more fun to watch uh, with people. I feel like and... it'd be really fun to watch with somebody <clears throat> whose favorite movie it is, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. But just they're like, you know, they're giddy and quoting it all the time. <laughs> yes. So me, basically. Yeah, basically. <laughs> uh, um, so here, here's actually an interesting thing about this movie <clears throat> that I wanted to point out. Um, I wanted to mention at some point. So the sword fight in the movie, the mm-hmm. Indigo and Wesley sword fight, which is actually really, generally really, really well done. They, you can tell they put a lot of practice and choreography into it. Mm-hmm. Like it, it doesn't have any tension there because again, it's like a gentlemanly duel more, you know. But I mean, that's kind of the point. But it's actually interesting at the longest. At, at the time and for the longest time this was the longest sword fight in a movie ever oh and until it was beaten can you guess what beat it star wars yes the okay. phantom menace <laughs> in 1999 which you know one of the prequels beat it with the darth maul fight with darth maul obi-wan qui-gon i don't know how much you remember the star wars uh, I, I do remember that moment yeah when the one guy falls off the ledge yeah we're right and then it's like he gets cut in half and falls down yeah, yeah that's one. so that beat it um, for longer and then that was beaten by another movie another which is Star Wars movie another Star Wars movie yeah Star Wars <sighs> Revenge of the Sith episode I'm 3 Hell yeah. Star Wars episode 3 Revenge of the Sith with the fight between Anakin and Obi-Wan the lava one. Oh yeah. Yeah. Which I have the high ground. Honestly isn't surprising that that's the longest sword fight in any movie ever because that scene it's really cool but it's so long that fight is mm-hmm. so drawn out. <laughs> like I mean it's supposed to be the big epic finale of the trilogy like it's the you know it's the f- final like falling out between the two characters and Yeah. And because they're like, obviously, we're best friends and stuff. But yeah, so I think it up to this day, I'm pretty sure it's still the third longest sword fight in any movie. So that's and the other two are Star Wars. The other two are Star Wars, which makes sense. Well, because if you look at like the so this movie came out, the original trilogy was already completed um, when this movie came out. So if you look at the original trilogy of Star Wars, like the lightsaber duels aren't super long they're really good and they're like they're 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 there's the sword fights in the the lightsaber fights in the original 
trilogy are more focused on the characters and the the emotion and stuff than it is on the like fancy fighting. Mm-hmm. So they're not as long. So, but then yeah, the prequels just when the pre when George Lucas did the prequels, they decided to go all out with choreography and just making a really big epic fight. <laughs> so, except for Episode Two, Episode Two kind of sucked with lightsaber duel, but you know, whatever. Every once in a while, just have to throw shade, just sprinkle it in there. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's that's just like an interesting little fact. Yeah, I'm pretty sure to this day it's still number three on longest, and then the uh, the other star. I'm pretty sure, because I mean, like, movies don't usually have super long sword fights. Like, how often is there a really long sword fight? You know, in a movie, right? There should be more. There should be more. I mean, you don't want it to be too long. Is the thing. Um, I mean, I think the sword fight in this movie is like perfect length. Like it. Oh yeah, it's. It's really it, well done, just because even when you don't know anything about sword fighting, like probably either of us, just watching it looks like interesting and, you know, you can see some of the ideas right. that they're putting into play. I mean, you could tell that the actors put a lot of effort and time into training for it and stuff too, mm-hmm. which I, I love when I see like something where you can tell, you know, that an actor really knows what they're doing with the action stuff. Um, Because, like, I mean, this isn't... They wouldn't have, like, stunt doubles or anything. Like, that's them, the actual actors, fencing, you know? Right. Um, Which is really cool. And they, like, they utilize the entire set. The entire set piece. Like, that entire area. They they range over the entire place, which is cool. They ranged all over. Like, in the... Like, the... The, um... The guy said... The tracking, yeah. The tracker. The prince who's also an expert tracker, which I don't know how his tracking skills are as good as they are. Like, how is that even possible? He's just like, yes. Uh, see, this is exactly what happened. Like, he the, all, all down to the detail. The winner went that way. The loser went that way. Like, mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> and <then laughs> I mean, I, I would have bought it if he, like, inspected it more, but... Well, I mean, maybe he did off screen. Right, right. Um... And he's like retracing the steps and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's ranged all over. But yeah, I mean, I think the thing, the reason why there's not a lot of super long sword fights in movies is because ooh, sword fights being that long is actually kind of unrealistic. Yeah. Like yeah. in real life, a sword fight's going to be over really quick, right? Oh, yeah. As soon as somebody gets cuts, gets cut, it's usually over. Like as soon as right. one good cut, you're not getting up. Right. It depends. I mean, it. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, yeah. <sighs> but, uh... Well, especially, don't... like, the sword clashes. That'll break a sword. Don't do that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They're not meant to take force, like, in that direction. Like, on the blade, sure, but that's, like, divert it because it's a blade. But on the side of it, nah, it's gonna snap. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, those are, those are like fencing swords, so they're like kind of designed for like sword fight type stuff like that. Right, and they're really wobbly. Right. Because like obviously other swords wouldn't be like if you had like a... I don't even know. Like a pirate sword, like a cutlass or something. Like that's not mm-hmm. necessarily designed as much for... Or a broadsword or a bastard or a broad sword. sword. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's... Yeah, you're not going to have a long sword fight with something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but for, if it's like a fencing type sword like that, you know, um, but I also love the, um, the part where he's like, he's like waiting for him to climb up up to the top and he's just like (laughs) impatient. Slow going. I don't know. He's like, like, you just wait. (laughs) I hate waiting. (laughs) I'm like, that's me. It's mm-hmm. literally me. It's like I can pass your rope. I'll give my word as a Spaniard. I've known too I've many known Spaniards. Too, no good. I've known too many Spaniards. He's like, <laughs> I swear uh, on my father. Throw me the rope. Throw me the rope. Like he could be making that up. Like you don't know this guy. Like you're mm-hmm. still okay. You don't know that he's Indigo Montoya hunting the man who killed his father. <laughs> 
He's got good arms. <laughs> he just falls. I also just love some of the names of things in here, like the Cliffs of Insanity. That's like the, what this this cliff is named. It's the Cliffs mm-hmm. of Insanity. The Cliffs of Insanity. The Fire Swamps. Yeah, it's like it's like they're trying to come up with a name for it. Like, oh, what should we name this cliff? I mean, that's a pretty insane cliff. Ah, got it. The Cliffs of Insanity. <laughs> like, of what about course. the swamp that spews fire? Fire <laughs> Swamp. <laughs> the Fire Swamp. Yep. <laughs> it's not too bad. Well, I'm not saying I would build a summer home here, but the trees are actually quite lovely. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, he's explaining about like the three uh, dangers. Like, well, we already figured out the fire spouts, and you just discovered the quicksand or whatever he called it. Yeah. What about the RUSs? I don't think those exist. Ah. <laughs> uh, and she's like she's just kind of doing nothing in that fight she's like oh Wesley yeah, yeah she kind of like I was so waiting for her to like go and grab the sword and like stab it and help him yeah see that I feel like that's one criticism I would have of this movie she's just kind of the classic damsel in distress who doesn't really do yeah, much yeah kind of annoying she's just kind of like yep. uh, and then oh and then there's this yep down to the part well, there's a scene where she's gonna kill herself too that was sad. but then Wesley stops her mm-hmm. with a great line of dialogue oh, yeah <laughs> there's a shortage of pressure breasts in this world it'd be a shame to damage yours <laughs> it's so stupid and I love it <laughs> uh and then obviously there's the classic wedding scene with Mowage. Like everybody knows that. Um, that's probably that's probably a quote you've knew beforehand. What? The wedding where he's like Mowage. <laughs> Mowage is what no, brings us. Honestly. You didn't know that? No. That's a really popular moment from this movie. Um <laughs> <laughs> God, yeah, that kind of took me off guard because I don't think I've ever heard anything like that. Or if I did, really? I just assumed that it was, you know, just people being idiots talking like idiots. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't yeah. expect them to be referencing something. Ah, uh, yeah, gotcha, gotcha. Yep, that's what it is. <laughs> and after the wedding, she's going. She gives the the king a kiss on the cheek. Oh, what was that for? She's like. Oh, it's because you've been so kind to me. Which, by the way, if they, the king and queen seem very like very nice people, how did they end up with such a terrible son? Right. But anyways, <laughs> um, and she's like, since I won't see you again, I decided I wanted to say farewell because I won't see you again since I'll be killing myself when we go on the honeymoon. He's just like, won't that be nice? Moves <laughs> on. He's just completely out of it. It's like he's so senile that he didn't hear the kill myself part and just heard the honeymoon part. And he's like, yes, he'll go on a honeymoon. Won't that be nice? Like, <laughs> oh, it's so he great. He goes over to his wife and it's like, like, you can tell he's looking over to talk to her. And it's just like, she just kissed me on the cheek. Just he's so excited about it. <laughs> oh. Completely oblivious. Yeah, how did their son turn out to be so terrible? My God, yeah. Well, because I, you know, Miracle Max probably was his mir- the king's miracle worker for many years, right? And they probably, mm-hmm. but then it wasn't until his son got older that he was like, "Oh, you're fired." I want to know the backstory of that. Like, what? Why did he fire him? I want to know the backstory. <laughs> uh, Maybe he was he was trying to cure the father of his scene on this but that would get in the way of the prince's rise to power and yada yada oh that'd be an interesting backstory I just came up hmm. with that on the spot there you go hmm. that's a that's that's a good backstory yeah I know, right um i know that's so i know there is so i know there is an actual book and i'm not sure if the book was written before the movie or if the movie was made and then the book was made i'm actually oh, not sure okay. um 
I mean, I'm gonna look this up. Princess Bride mm. book. What's the Princess Bride a book first? So there we go. The Princess Bride is a book within a movie, and the movie itself is based on a real book. Ah, okay. Oh, However, okay. there are several differences between the two versions. Right. Well, I mean, I'm sure. I'm, I feel like the book might be more like serious tone. I don't know. Aww. Maybe it takes itself. Well, because the book obviously doesn't have the whole like framing of like the father or the grandfather reading it to his grandson. I think. I think the right, book is right. just the story, and then they use that book for the movie. And then, yeah. When I was your age, television was called books. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and then oh, there's the right, Grandpa, but go and then there's the great quote at the beginning where he's like just telling him all the stuff that's in it. He's like, "Yeah, fencing, fighting, giants, monsters, <laughs> torture, revenge, true love, miracles." That's a great it's quote too. There. It's all in there. Yeah, he's like, "Here, that that's what this is." Um. Yeah, I want to know the. I, I I love that the that they just happened to f- the the six fingered man that killed his father. You had just happens to be like the king's right hand man. Oh right. Or not the king, the prince's right hand man. Close enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he seems to be making all the shots in this kingdom, like calling all the shots. Like the king doesn't seem to be that much. In, like the king seems to be old and senile. Like he's not that much in power anymore. So he basically is the king at this point. Yeah. like That's another aspect of the thing of like, if you analyze this whole thing's political structure, it's like, why has the king not been like dethroned at this point or like well, retired? I guess the uh, the maybe it's like the idea is the way this kingdom works is like the prince doesn't become the king until the king dies, right? Uh-huh. That's kind but of he the still takes power though. Like he's right in a way he's still technically running things, but he's still not officially the king until the king dies. Because there's like that scene where maybe there's it like, would have been like when he married, he would have been the king. Maybe. Yeah, but then his wife was going to die right after anyways, so it's not like that was going to last long. Still got married. It's going to strangle him on their wedding night. Can't unking him. It'll be so much more moving when I get to strangle her on our wedding night. <laughs> Such a prick. What the heck? But, but no, like, I think, um, yeah, it's probably one of those things where it's like, because there's the scene where um, it says, like, the king died that night and he became the king and married her you know buttercup or whatever but it turned out mm-hmm. to be a dream you know and like he came out with the the crown on the king's crown on and stuff so he, like it was like his father dies he's the king i think that's kind of the general political structure that they have going on oh okay that's that's the, the more implication i think I about get. this the more i would love someone to do a full deep depth analysis of political right. structure and economy and well, all this because it's just not to see how much it doesn't make any fucking sense that would that would actually be fun right? um the but it's not like because like if you think about like something like let's say in the avatar universe like the fire nation the fire lord passes down who the like before they're dead like in in mm. where we're at in legend of korra in our legend of Korra discussion like we already found out that like zuko isn't the fire lord anymore because he passed it on to his daughter right so it's like it's not like that i guess it's more mm-hmm. like a you know once you die then you even you're still labeled as the king even if you're not actually doing anything to rule your country because you're too senile mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's so weird i need since i'll that be killing analysis. myself since i'll be killing myself on the honey before the honeymoon won't that be nice <laughs> again this movie just kind of like not taking death that seriously like oh you're gonna kill yourself won't that be nice like <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. 
we've somehow extended this past an hour. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Look at that. We did it. Woo. Hooray. Um, yeah, no, we actually, I think we had some good discussion on this movie. Yeah, that was, that was yeah, good. Yeah, and good. a lot of just laughing at quotes. <laughs> I mean, Which yeah, is but. rightfully so, rightfully so. I feel like that's, that's half of what this movie is about. It's just. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we didn't even talk about the rhyming scene. Darn. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't rocks ahead. He said. If there are, we'll all be dead. Um. You can't anyways. remember it either. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can. I can. I just. I'm. I'm you know. We we probably need to get ready to close now. All right. Um. Anyways, that's about all for our discussion on this movie. Um. Yeah. Uh. Happy. I guess late Valentine's Day to everyone now. Because this technically mm-hmm. comes out after Valentine's Day. Well, we're recording it a day after Valentine's Day, actually, too. Yeah, we watched it on Valentine's Day, or at least I did. Well, you did. I didn't. I actually watched uh, it on Saturday. Um, but yeah, so you lied to me. You well, said you watch it every year. We do. It's just we don't always watch it on. Like it depends on what day we celebrate Valentine's Day. Because the thing is, like. M- on valentine's day like i was working and she had a class at night and stuff so we weren't able to like do go out for valentine's day and do a whole thing so we asked this time so we celebrated on saturday instead the saturday before valentine's day so we watched it that night so two night two days before valentine's day we watched it um so yeah anyways that's about all for that so thank you for listening to waban um next week on the podcast we are going to finish our discussion on the legend of Korra. so that'll be really exciting um i'm actually looking really looking forward to finishing it off um i've, I've actually really enjoyed talking about Korra. i think yeah. i wasn't sure i wasn't sure how that would go because I, I had only seen it once and it had been a while, but uh, I think it, even though it's not as good as Avatar, it's a really it, it, it did spark a lot of interesting discussions. So I, I really like I'm really liking it. Um, so yeah, that'll be next week, and the week after that will be the 52nd episode of the podcast. When that means 52 weeks of the podcast, which means one year. So two weeks from now, the podcast will have been going for one year. We're not 100% sure what we're doing for uh, one year, our one-year anniversary podcast yet. We're going to try to come up with something special to do um, instead of just doing a movie discussion. So, uh, yeah, give us suggestions in the comments. Um, any suggestion that you have of what we could do it would be that would be appreciated but yeah can you believe it's been almost a year no <laughs> no it's still going somehow yeah, it's still happening um yeah so that'll be really exciting um so uh hopefully next week we'll figure out what we're actually doing and i'll let you know uh but yeah so definitely look forward to listening to the podcast again next week you can find it um next saturday at noon eastern standard time that is when a new episode of this podcast is out every single week um it's been consistent like that ever since it started a year ago almost a year ago that's that's some pretty good consistency every Mm -hmm. single week we have shockingly done a good job of that. Yeah. Sh- yeah. Two people who are not good at doing things. Um, not, are, are good at procrastinating on things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Somehow accomplished this. Um, we're not bad at doing things. We're just good at not doing things. <laughs> yes. They, yeah, exactly. If we actually do the things, then we're good at doing them. But it's just getting to the point of actually doing them. That's the hard mm-hmm. part. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so, uh, yeah, so definitely be ready for that. Um, and we there definitely check out the, uh, Waban YouTube channel. Um, if you would like there, so the podcast is every episode of the podcast is on the Waban YouTube channel. And we also have some gaming videos that we're coming out with right now. So we, we did gaming through, we 
played through Portal 1, and now it's going through Portal 2, um, and we'll see where it goes after that. So definitely check that out. Um, that's been a lot of fun, and yeah. And there should be a link in the description to the Waban YouTube channel. Um, you can also check out the Waban on many different audio platforms, including things like Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more uh, plat- audio platforms. Really, just any podcasting platform, you can probably search it and find it. Maybe not any, but there, there's there's some that it's on, but, you know. Um, also, you can check out my YouTube channel. Uh, my YouTube channel is called NIM TV. There will be a link in the description to that as well. That's NIM TV. Um, pretty soon, I'm going to be... I'm working on a video right now uh, that is has to do with Harry Potter, actually. Uh, specifically mm-hmm. talking about the themes and how the filmmaking works to um, works with the themes of the movie for the third Harry Potter movie, The Prisoner of Azkaban, which is my favorite. So that video is coming out at some time this sometime before the end of the month, uh, before the end of February. So yeah, definitely go check out my channel. Look forward to, for uh, that. Anyways, that's about all. Thank you everyone for listening. <sighs> Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye.